So how do you manage your money? How do you manage your money when your money comes in every single month? You get your paycheck or your business is paid or your consultancy, however, however you get money basically, how do you manage that money? How do you decide what goes where? Because I always tell people, if you do not track what you have, if you do not budget for the money that comes into your house, you can't say where you're going to. If you have no budget, it means you have no road to lead you somewhere. So a budget, or what you call financial management system that you have in the house or anywhere else creates a destination for you. You know where you're going to and know which road you have to follow. So how do you manage your money? How do you manage your money every month? I think this is one of the biggest problems most people are facing. And not just in the US as people always assume, but all over the world. Even in Africa, in Kenya, a lot of people are always struggling on how to manage their money. It's a very important topic, honestly, and it's one of those simple things that we do ignore. So financial experts will be talking about big stuff, you know, like big words. But we forget that there are certain very simple stuff that people need to do in their lives for them to get their finances in order. By the way, my mouth is quite painful, so when I speak, it's really painful. So maybe today I'm going to be weighing it. <laughs> anyway, guys, so how do you manage that money? How do you manage your money? There is something we call the 50, 30, 20 rule. And uh, it's just basically a way in which you can divide your money when it comes every single month. And for those who don't want to come for finance coaching so that we can teach them how to do this work quite well, there is the 50, 30, 20 rule. This was basically popularized by Elizabeth Warren, the senator in the US, the popular senator, the popular senator in the US. She wrote a book known as All Your Word, The Ultimate Money Plan. And in that book, she popularized this idea and she's always spoken about it, basically to help people manage their, their money better. This was because of the spiraling consumer debt and credit card debts that the Americans had. And credit card debts in the US, 500 billion. The only thing in Africa is that we don't, we don't have the culture of credit cards as much as the US and Europe. But um, I do imagine that if we had that culture, then we would be having crazy debts right now. But still, people have lots of debts. And it's not a bad thing to have debts, but the issue is that it's not been managed well. Welcome to Kent's Money Matters. And here at Kent's Money Matters, we talk about the money mindset, how to make that money, how to manage that money, how to enjoy that money, how to invest that money and how to assure yourself of a lifetime of consistent income. So let's get straight into it. And I just want to talk about money management. If you are new, please consider subscribing and like the channel, like the videos so that you can help push this message and help with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for doing that. So now let's get into this topic. How do you manage that money? And it's one of the smallest or the simplest topics that most people would ignore, but it's one of the most important. If you manage your money well, chances are you're going to build wealth. The process of building wealth is just about your money management. So if this is perfect and foolproof, you are on the right track. We have the 50, 30, 20 rule. How does it work? So the 50% is supposed to go towards your needs. And when I say needs, this is where people always get confused. What are needs and what are wants? I'm going to explain. Just give me a minute. Stay tuned. So the first thing, the 50 is for your needs because of course you have to live your life. You have to live well, right? And then the second 30 is for your wants. And then the third 20, which is the 20, is for your savings and investments or debt payment. So this is the way they are allocated. But let me explain. And sometimes I always say I don't just take things from the Western model or from the Western perspective of looking at things and transpose them to the African perspective. Because I know I speak to so many Africans, and especially Kenyans. So I don't want to assume that that rule is going to function. But let's just look at it logically. And then we're going to see if it's going to work for most of our people in our country. And again, these things are never set in stone. So if you have your money, you can always tweak around and see what works for you. But if you are having a problem and you want like to start saving money, then this is the simplest way, the simplest method through which you can begin, right? So it gives you a chance to do everything that finance coaches would always tell you to do. Like I've said, the 50% of that money would be going towards your needs. Now, what are needs? Some Kenyans I'm sure will tell you that going out or watching Netflix or doing some crazy things are needs. Those are not needs. Now let's look. What are some of the needs? Let's give examples like mortgages. That's a need. Your shelter, if you're paying rent, that's a need. If you are paying your transport to work, for example, that's a need. For food, that's a need. Your clothes, that's a need. But clothes here, there's a distinction. So we need to know 
that it's not just that you go and buy some expensive clothes and Gucci and Louis uh, and all those things to just look good and then say that's a need. No, I do believe that depends on how you actually manage your money and how you actually where you are in terms of wealth building. So that depends on each individual. And that's why these things have to be attuned to an individual situation. That's what we do as finance coaches. We, are, oh, we, we attune all these financial concepts to your individual circumstances. So if I say clothes are needs, someone would say, okay, but then it means I can just buy any kind of clothes, you know, like however expensive. I would say, no, you shouldn't. There are certain kind of clothes and there's a place you should be getting them at a particular price. But whatever the case, anyway, if you follow this rule, it will also mean that if you were spending too much, you're going to run out of money because you can only spend 50%, of course, unless you're getting lots and lots of money. Again, that's why I said it depends on your situation. So the needs, like I said, things like house, mortgage, rent, um, electricity, water, all those bills that you have to live on, those things that you cannot live without, those things are the needs. Please, needs are not Netflix. Needs are not things like um, going out every weekend, for example. Needs are not like expensive handbags, for example. Those are not needs, those are wants. Things that you basically need for your survival fall under needs. So the 50% will go there. This is to ensure that you're living a normal life. Remember, always distinguish between your needs and your wants. I know sometimes something that I want, that could be a want to me, that's not, not, not necessary for my survival, could actually be a need to someone else. That's what I say. You have to know your life and what you require. So draw your list of needs and draw your list of wants. These things may not be as uh, fixed as they seem. You have to attune them. 30% goes towards your wants. And here at your ones, this way I always become very strict when I'm coaching people because here I cut things off. Especially if you are in the process of building wealth, I don't believe you should allocate 30% of your money towards ones really. You can survive on barely nothing really. Like I'm a minimalist. I can, I buy clothes like once in a while. I used to buy lots of clothes before. Like I was like, crazy when it came to buying clothes. I used to buy expensive shoes, expensive, you know, pants, expensive jumpers like these ones. So I had to start the process of building wealth, thinking about my future and stuff like that. So I had to stop, I had to scale down. So I've been through that, so I understand it quite well. I've been through that journey, especially when it comes to spending on clothes and going out and stuff like that. So when it comes to wants, look at your life and look at the things that will facilitate your life to be better. Don't just decide on the list of, you know, ones could be like Netflix, ones could be like going out, ones could be like buying expensive bags, uh, buying expensive, you know, clothes and stuff like that. No, don't wait for someone to give you a list look at your life and decide on the ones that you feel will facilitate the life you're living right now you're not just buying them because someone has bought them or just because you have an extra money or you have like 30 percent to waste therefore you go buying all these ones no buy something that you're sure you will use you are sure it will facilitate the way you are living but you don't necessarily need it so without it you can still survive for example people with kids buy lots of toys you know for no reason so a kid will always play with a toy after one month they are tired of it it's now to taken to the store and then you start buying a new one and these things become very expensive. So sometimes you have to teach your kids how to, you know, deal with money, think about saving, think about, you know, keeping their stuff for a longer period of time, reward them, teach them how to be responsible. And that's how you make sure that even your wants don't get to that 30%. But if you want to follow this particular rule, it falls at 30%. So like I said, wants are those things that you can survive without, but of course, sometimes you need them. Like a gym subscription, for example. Like I used to belong to a gym severally. I've belonged to different gyms. But now I work out at home since Corona happened, really. And I've realized I'm now saving some few, you know, some few coins here and there. And I can work out quite well. I feel good. So these are things that you can live without. You know, like when Corona struck last year, a lot of these things were cut off. A lot of the things that we thought we wanted in our lives, that we had to have, were cut off from our lives. And we continued without any problem, really. So again, like, like I say, just make sure that you actually attune your wants and know them exactly what facilitates your life. I hope that makes sense. And then the third one, which is the 20%. The 20% should now go towards your savings. But first, before savings or investments, remember debts. So if you have any debts, this way you're going to take the money to, and you're going to decide, okay, which debt am I going to pay first? Of course, depending on which method you're using, whether it's the avalanche or the snowball method, you can decide on paying in debts, basically. And I've done a video on snowball and avalanche method of paying debts. You can check that out in the description or on my channel somewhere. But what I'm saying is you should allocate that money towards paying your debts so that you're debt-free before you start the process of investing. It's clear? Yes. So if you're debt-free, you're going to build wealth consistently, 
patiently without worrying about debts that's accumulating. So always remember that you have to pay your debts. So the 20% should go towards debts. And of course, it depends on the kind of debts you have. Again, your individual situation. Then when you're done with your debts, or if you don't have any debts, then it should go towards your savings, your investments, your retirement planning, and all those kind of stuff. Again, depends on your individual situation, what you are going for, your objectives, your goals with regards to investing. I just don't transpose things from US or Europe and then tell my people, okay, this is what you need to do. No, I look at our situation, I look at our environment, I look at everything around us, and then I make sure that it matches that particular principle and how can we actually tune it and adapt it to our own environment and culture. That's why I'm saying even for me, I think 30% is quite high so it's good for someone who's beginning to manage their money, but with time, you realize that 30% on once, that's quite high. I would want to double down on my investments or if I have debts, and then I can be free and then invest more money and be financially free, depending again on your goals. If you want to start that process, if you want to begin that process, but you don't know how, remember, Ken's Money Matters, I'm available for finance coaching. And now we have a website. You just go there, you choose a plan, you choose whatever you want to deal with, we did with so many different stuff. We did with, you know, debt management. We did with financial planning. We did with financial management. We did with the financial health assessment. We did with relationships and finances. We did with finances in life situations like divorce and stuff like that. So if you want some advice that you feel is beyond the scope of a video, feel free to reach out, get to my website. The link is always in the description. Go to my website, see whatever is available. See what you think fits your situation and then contact me and then we can talk about it you know and you will be on your way to building wealth always remember guys share the message and stay tuned for more videos to come i see you next time bye